Welcome back, friends. We've been talking about the fact that Janet Yellen would be the first female Treasury Secretary if confirmed, but she's not the only one making history. In New Mexico, Teresa Ledger Fernandez is also blazing the trail for women and the Latinx community. The representative-elect will be the first woman and first Latina woman to represent her U.S. House district. Not only that, New Mexico will be represented by all women and all women of color. For the very first time, this is a big deal. I'm joined now by Representative-elect Teresa Ledger-Fernandez of New Mexico to talk about this historic win. Represent Representative-elect, congratulations. Thank you so much for coming on the show. We really do appreciate your time. We just listed all of the glass ceilings that you are currently breaking. Thank you on behalf of all women in this country. Tell us about the importance of this moment. It is actually wonderful because, you know, what we have is New Mexico is doing what we need to do across the country in so many areas. You know, I like to say that what, it's a mishmash of both Lynn Manuel Miranda and Justice Ginsburg, where women and especially women of color need to be in all the places where decisions are being made about our communities. And that includes in Congress, in the House and the executive as vice president, because we bring lived experience to those places to talk about the policies that are gonna affect our communities. And you're right, there's a record-breaking number of women serving in Congress next year, at least 141, so that's quite the feat for our nation. So tell us, Representative-elect, what's on your agenda here? What do you wanna do first when you get into, the, get into office, your first year? So we are faced with the very first thing, and you're going to hear this over and over again, we have to pass a significant COVID uh, economic and health care relief bill. But when we do that, we need to also say, what are the other crises that we are facing? And let's start using that recovery bill to address that and to change what we need to move forward. So that means that when we do that recovery bill, let's invest in the green energy that we need, the green energy grid. Let's expand our understanding of infrastructure. So it includes not just the 20th century, and I am sorry, there are too many places without clean water. We need to get that done. But we also need to get broadband. We need to expand our understanding so that we are covering early child care, affordable housing, rural health clinics. And something dear to my heart, I am going to be pushing that we also address uh, the creative economy. New Mexico, one in 10 people are receiving their income from participating in the creative economy. That's a gig economy that has been just destroyed by the pandemic. So that's something that's kind of unique to New Mexico that I'll be pushing. And uh, I know there are a lot of people out there who remember what it was like with that WPA funding and all the beautiful murals we have now because of it. Your district also includes part of the Navajo Nation. We know the pandemic has disproportionately affected Native American communities. What is your plan to battle that, Representative-elect? So it's disproportionately impacted it because we have failed as a country. We have failed to honor our trust obligations to Native Americans. We have failed to put in the infrastructure. We have failed to put to put in the, the housing the, and the access to health care. I have worked uh, as general counsel and with Native Americans for the last three decades. It's been something I've dedicated my life's work to. And so what we're going to have to do is, you know, overturn and address each of those failures by fully funding the Indian Health Service fully funding the Bureau of Indian Education, getting that broadband in, and really recognizing that tribes know best. They are sovereign nations, and they know best what to do for their own communities. This administration has failed to get them the COVID relief that was already authorized by Congress. And what we're going to have is we're going to have a Biden administration that understands that, and that's going to work with the Congress that also understands the need and the obligations that we have, the promises that we made to honor those promises and fully fund those programs that uh, support them and also give tribes uh, the authority to uh, have self-determination and to exercise their sovereignty because they know best how to address these issues in their communities. Orientation for new House members began just a few weeks ago on Capitol Hill. I'm so curious to ask what conversations you may have had with uh, Republicans across the aisle, and what's the general feeling among these new members? 
So, uh, you know, I actually did have conversations across the aisle. Uh, you know, some of the Republican women were taking pictures for us of others, you know, and so we were doing that regularly, you know, the little interactions that you have and lingering. Uh, I did discuss uh, concepts of actually some bills that I might want to introduce uh, with some of my neighbor Republicans in, in Oklahoma and Texas. Things like addressing, making sure um, we have uh, small farmers and ranchers able to get their food to the market. So, you know, addressing things like that, that it's it cuts across, right? The issue of wanting to have healthy uh, food grown in a way that sustains our environment is something that, you know, should uh, appeal to anybody, whether you're on one side of the aisle or not, uh, because we all want that tasty food that is also good for our planet and good for the economy in rural areas. So that's like an example of a particular conversation I had. But I know that uh, in many ways, there were lots of com lots of conversations that I know people were having, you know, with our colleagues. I have to say that was a great conversation. Thank you for sharing that story with us. Uh, my last question before I let you go. The nation has their eyes on New Mexico and its all-female House team. What do you hope other states learn from this barrier-breaking moment in our nation's history? Well, I really think that the, the idea that we are not just all women, but that we represent different communities that look like uh, New Mexico, but that also look like the country, that we need to realize that cultural diversity, racial diversity, that we have to celebrate uh, who we all are and that we all can work, that we all part of a whole, right? And I have fought for uh, multicultural, multiracial, you know, communities for all my life. And the reality is when we start learning about each other, we do incredibly, we are strongest when we understand our differences and we are strongest when we work together. And I think that that is a lesson for the country, uh, that this is how we heal our divides, is what New Mexico has done. It truly is a pleasure talking to you, Representative-elect Teresa Ledger Fernandez of New Mexico. Thank you again for your time.